In 2014, the terrorist regime of Israel launched a military attack on the innocent and defenceless Palestinian people. And the international community responded by calling for the immediate boycott of all Israeli products and all companies funding the State of Israel. Now that 2015 is here, the bombing has reduced, but Palestine is still illegally occupied by this regime, and the torture and bloodshed continues. We must not only continue the boycott, but increase its intensity. So here are the top 10 Israeli terror companies to boycott, so you can make a positive difference in the lives of Palestinian people. GE have been providing the Israeli terrorist army with parts for their jets, helicopters and other death machines since the 1980s. In response to the recent Palestinian deaths, the group Jewish Voice for Peace recently marched in front of the GE building in the heart of the Rockefeller Plaza and read aloud the names of the Palestinians who GE have helped murder. The director of Jewish Voice for Peace, Rebecca Vilcomerson, said the GE inflict indiscriminate violence against the Palestinians in Gaza, resulting in death and destruction. Another Jewish anti-Zionist organisation, Jews Say No, distributed a press release, including a statement from Rihan Bahuti, which noted that GE was complicit in Israeli violations of international law and Palestinian human rights, and as such must be held accountable. But GE's involvement goes much deeper than military aircrafts, and they are heavily involved in creating the infrastructure to ensure that Palestinians remain trapped and are tortured inside their massive concentration camp. GE even brags about this on their own website, and the Invest in Israel website notes that there has been 62 years of GE success in Israel, with a quote from GE's senior VP, Beth Comstock, I understand the optimism people have here. It's very much an energetic, can-do society. Yep, can bomb, can kill, can destroy, can violate international law without receiving any punishment. I have to agree, it's a can-do kind of country. McDonald's is a major corporate partner of the Jewish United Fund in Chicago, who are involved in the deadly spread of Zionism and intend to completely wipe out every single Palestinian from Israel. They don't even hide this fact and list it proudly on their website. Officially, through its Israel Commission, the Jewish United Fund works to maintain American military, economic and diplomatic support for Israel, monitors and, when necessary, responds to media coverage of Israel. So essentially, these are the guys who bribe and threaten US politicians to make sure that the US keeps sending billions of dollars of financial support to Israel and as well as ensuring that any media personalities are silenced and blacklisted if they dare to speak the truth about Israel in public. Thanks McDonald's. But that's not all. McDonald's money is used to run Zionism indoctrination tours where they send both Christian leaders and US school children on trips to Israel and also ends up directly in Israel through the Partnership in Israel program where it is used to build illegal settlements in areas which are recognised by the UN to be stolen land and where the murderous Israelis ethnically cleansed the Palestinians from the land. Coca-Cola has been a staunch supporter of the Israeli terrorists since the 1960s and has even worked hand in hand with the Israeli regime to drive Palestinians from the land that the UN recognises as stolen in order to set up their bottling plants. Can you imagine a company sponsoring yearly award ceremony in the 1930s and 40s for Nazis who murder Jews? Well, Coca-Cola are doing the exact same thing today by bankrolling the annual American Israel Chamber of Commerce Awards Gala. This event is a who's who of the biggest terrorism funders in the world and Coca-Cola makes sure they are well rewarded for murder. Special receptions and lectures have been organised and funded for people such as the infamous Zionist journalist Linda Gradstein and internationally wanted war criminal Brigadier General Ben Lisa, who forced captured POWs to dig their own graves before shooting and burying them. They also sponsor the Jewish Community Centre Association and their summer camps, which are operated by emissaries from Israel 
who are specially trained to whitewash Israeli war crimes. For their efforts, Coca-Cola has been specially honoured by, by Israel at their trade awards dinner for their continued support of the illegal occupation of Palestine. The Kraft name is synonymous with Israel, with their CEO and chairman Robert Kraft and his recently deceased wife Myra, known for their generous contributions to Israeli apartheid. Myra was on the board of the sinister American Jewish Joint Distribution Community, a frequent traveller to Israel, and famously told the Boston Globe that she puts the terrorist state of Israel above her own family. Robert Kraft has personally written to the families of dead terrorist soldiers as well. Kraft has major packing facilities in Israel, and while previously offering employment to all races within Israel, has now ceased employing Palestinians. Besides Kraft itself, Robert Kraft has numerous other investments within Israel and is responsible for funneling some serious cash into the illegally occupied lands of Palestine. Hewlett Packard, or more commonly known as HP, uses its profits from computers, printers and other electronics to assist in the persecution of Palestinians inside their concentration camp environment. Specifically, they have implemented biometric technology at the Israeli checkpoints and on the identification cards, helping to keep them entrapped inside their open-air jail and preventing them from access to basic human rights such as food, water, medical care and even employment. Their CEO, Leo Apatheka, in an interview with a Jewish news website, admitted he was brought up on a steady diet of Zionism. He says, I was raised in a Zionist home and learned Hebrew even before moving to Israel. I was the head of the Zionist youth movement and believed that leadership should be attained by setting an example. It has been directly involved in escalating the suffering of the Palestinians when he was the head of the Zionist youth movement. Another famous Zionist CEO is Starbucks' Howard Schultz, the recipient of the Israel 50th Anniversary Friend of Zion Tribute Award, presented by the Jewish Fund of Aish Hatora. These guys are a right-wing religious institute directly involved in the military arms of the Israeli regime and the operation of the Zionist propaganda website, ironically named Honest Reporting. The extent of this propaganda and lies was revealed in an article in the Jerusalem Report where the Israeli Foreign Ministry said Schultz was the key to Israel's long-term PR success. Aside from the delightful Mr Schultz, Starbucks itself supports the murder of Muslims in many countries occupied by force around the world, including Afghanistan and Israel, through fundraisers such as Bowl for Israel, a program to provide financial support to war criminals and their families. Now this is where it gets interesting. Notice how the reference to the Starbucks sponsorship in the Bolathon has been deleted? Well, the same thing was done on the Starbucks website, where they listed Schultz's Zionist awards. In fact, Starbucks has been desperately scrambling across the internet trying to delete all records of their funding of Zionism in Israel. Unfortunately, they have forgot about the Wayback Machine, where there are records kept of the, con of the content of websites from dates in the past, and we have proof of their complicity in war crimes. After Starbucks thought they had deleted the records of their Israeli terrorism funding, they organised for the Huffington Post to publish an official denial, where they stated that neither Starbucks nor its CEO, Howard Schultz, provides any financial support to the Israeli government or the Israeli military. But technically, this is correct. However, if you give money to your friend Bob, and then you told Bob, give the money to John, although technically you haven't given the money to John, even Blind Freddy can see that you are in reality still giving the money to John. Hey, wonder why the Huffington Post was the one publishing this garbage? Well, it just turns out the Schultz's son, Jordan Schultz, works there. Very interesting indeed. Intel are the computer processor powerhouse, 
and the bulk of their products are produced in factories on land that the United Nations has demanded Israel withdraw from, due to it being illegally occupied. After driving out the local inhabitants with bloodshed, they demolished their homes and set up their multi-billion dollar empire. By denying the remaining Palestinian refugees the right to return to their own land, Intel is complicit in breaking and ignoring numerous international laws, human rights, and multiple UN resolutions. Intel are also long-time funders of apartheid education, indoctrinating the next generation of Israelis to continue the persecution of innocent Palestinians. Intel's support of the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians is not really disputed, but often the excuse given that their processes are in every computer, so we need to buy them. Well, this excuse is not valid, because you can buy computer processes from a company that is equally as good, AMD. And if you get really stuck, just buy second hand. But avoid buying new computers with Intel processors at all costs if you don't want the blood of Palestinians on your hands. The Israel apartheid state could not operate effectively without the support of Motorola, who provide the surveillance equipment the evil regime uses to keep the Palestinians shut inside the gigantic concrete walls. You will find Motorola cameras, radars, motion detectors in place not just in the Israeli settlements, but also along the massive separation barrier built along the Israel and Gaza border. But their involvement started way before the apartheid walls were built, and they were called out assisting the Israelis build murder bombs when their serial numbers were found on some of the units. To this day, they continue to work with the Israeli army in the technological development of more sophisticated killing and torture devices and have recently signed a multi-million dollar agreement with the Zionists to provide encrypted smartphones and GPS capabilities to the terrorist, ground force soldiers and security personnel. Kimberly Clark and the makers of Kleenex, Kotex, Huggies and many other disposable consumer products. They're one of the largest employers in Israel with multiple manufacturing plants and distribution centres including some constructed within legal settlements on the West Bank. Kimberly Clark was presented with the Jubilee Award personally by Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu on Israel's 50th anniversary in recognition of their ongoing funding of the Israeli terrorist state. Such is their contribution and market dominance, a few of their products have recently been recognised as Israeli super brands. Nestle were another company who received the Jubilee Award from Israel for financially supporting their illegal occupation of Palestine. They have built more than 10 factories on land stolen from the original Palestinian owners, with plans for further expansion and land grabbing in the future. Nestle also have a substantial controlling interest in L'Oreal, and it should come as no surprise that L'Oreal is another major Muslim murder contributor and built their first Israeli factory on lands that have been ethnically cleansed. But maybe the worst of their crimes is the continued funding of the Weizmann Institute who develop nuclear, chemical and biological weapons for the Israeli military. The boycott of 2014 was a great success. The stock prices of many of the companies targeted plummeted. With many supermarkets and retail outlets getting on board and refusing to sell any products with an Israeli origin. And it's never been more important than now that Ban Ki-moon and the UN were called out helping to cover up Israel's human rights violations. And from an Islamic point of view, the boycott of Israel and those that support Israel is unanimous amongst all the schools of thought and all the sects of Islam. It's one of the few things that everyone agrees on. There have been multiple fatwas which declare it haram to purchase products from any of the 10 companies mentioned, as well as other companies funding Israel. While being impartial, I must mention that there are a few scholars who, while agreeing with the boycott, have not agreed with the fatwas that it is haram. However, I personally haven't seen them give any evidence to support that position and do not agree with it.
I mean, if you freely give someone money and you full well know that they are going to use that money to build a bomb, to kill your Palestinian Muslim brothers and sisters, then you've got blood on your hands. The blood of a fellow Muslim. And this is why the scholars have ruled it to be Tehran, and why we are obligated to boycott all Israeli products and boycott all the companies providing financial support to Israel. Assalamu alaikum.